Hey all, hi, I am Jo with Click to Restore and I'm a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. You're watching me live on the Redesign with Prima Facebook page. Uh, as you join, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. It's so nice to know about our followers, where they are located. Well, I am based in McKinney, Texas, and uh, today I will be showing you how to do decoupage on this or more. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this uh, decoupage paper uh, and that is called a peach damask. Uh, so this comes in two sheet and each sheet is 19 by 30. Hey Roz! And each sheet is 19 by 30 and this is how it comes in in this cute, cute little box and it has two sheets. So this is how it looks like. I've taken these out and this is how the sheets look like so these are the two sheets that you find from the container and this is what i'm going to be using uh today and this is the armora that i'm working on so i have blended this in uh, three colors from visal it's all blended and i started working on the transfer and it's still a lot of work it's still remaining but uh, i will continue with this but i want to go ahead and show you what i'm going to do on the sides on the inside so if you see on the inside i have uh blended this because the base is dark so i blended uh this kind of in a dark orange and i'm using again uh white out colors and then i bl blended it into the lighter thank you so much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to uh, use tissue papers from redesign with prima and do the decoupage so i'm just gonna tilt it a little bit and I'm going to sit on the floor because it's so easy. So what I've done is there are two drawers here. You can see this one I have already painted because I wanted to show you how you can use the tissue paper on a painted surface. So this is what I'm going to do, but I'm going to be painting this so that you see how you begin when you do the decoupage. So what you need is these are your supplies. You need the tissue paper. Um, you need a sanding pad, sponge or a sheet. So I have this sanding uh, sheet sponge from Surf Prep. You need uh, a top coat, and I'm using Wiesel varnish today for this. And uh, so the first step is going and sanding your surface. This is very important when you are doing a decoupage. So I'll take the sanding block, and I'm going to pull this out. Let me know if you can, you know, view this clearly. I can move this a little bit forward so you can see. So this, I haven't done anything to the surface. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to sand it. Just cuff it a little bit. So once you sand, you just take a paper towel and you just go ahead and wipe it. Just clean it. You can also use some water or a wet wipe to do this, but I just dust it off because it was just a dry sanding. This is all clear of any dust. So once you have done this step, what do you do is you take your paint. So I'm using Weiss Owl Anemone. I think this is discontinued, I'm not sure. And I'm using a Klingon brush for that. So since I painted this, I just use a shrink wrap. And I what I do is I just wrap my brush in these uh, shrink wrap so that it doesn't dry. And when I'm ready to paint, I just take this off and just toss it so my brush is still moist. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go after sanding, I will go and do one coat of the chalk paint. So when you're doing a decoupage, it need not be perfect because once you put the de tissue paper on it, um, you already can tell the brush stroke so don't worry about it just uh, because you wanted a painted surface for this and uh, the thing is why i'm painting that will be the next question is because i wanted uh you see these uh, damask design the details i wanted these uh, cream details to pop out that is why i painted the base so if you don't want to paint the base you need not uh, worry about it you can just go ahead and use the same method that i will be showing you to decoupage so this is my one coat, I've done it. I'll stipple the top because I like the top of my drawers to be nice and clean when my client opens this. So 
This is what I will do and I'll just push it back and leave it to dry here. I just go ahead and wrap my brush back in the shrink wrap and it's done. I'll save it until I'm back to do the second coat. So now you see this is what, after drying, it looks like this. So this is the drawer that's dry. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm grabbing, I'm gonna grab another brush. It's again a Klingon brush. And I will take the varnish from Weissau. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and put one coat of the top coat on this. So what you basically do is you are sealing the paint, but that's where your tissue paper is gonna grab onto because it needs a moist, something wet underneath to stick to. I know there are others who use Mod Podge, but for me, a uh, top coat uh, works really good, nice and good and it seals as well. You can use any clear coat, any top coat you like. So once the one coat is on, I will take the, uh, paper, the tissue paper is here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna align it. And I'm gonna just press it gently with my hands to squeeze out any air bubbles. And I can see, you can just see, if you, if it's, you see a little gap here and there, you can just take it up like this and just move it a little bit to fit on to the space correctly. You can move it out and again go and put it back. So that's the ease of uh, the tissue paper. So once it's onto the surface, you just give it a nice rub so that it just clings onto the uh, top coat. Once it's there, what I'm gonna do is you can leave it and you know just go on to do some other work because it's gonna dry and turn hard. But since I'm gonna live right now, I'm just going to go to the second step that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my sanding sponge and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand the edges. I hope this is uh, visible to you, right? Okay, so I'm gonna sand the ed edges to take the excess uh, tissue paper out. You see? And it's very sharp and nicely it comes out of it. Instead of cu um, cutting, I just tend to use this method. It's more easy, it's more accurate uh, compared to the cutting method. So I'll first do the flat side and then I'll come to the um, arch here. that some of this part is, you know, the tissue paper not come off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top coat back again because I can see the loose end because of the sanding and I will go and put the top coat right away. What I'm doing is I'm sealing the uh, um, tissue paper right away and giving it a medium to stick onto the surface. So I will go and secure the edges first and once it dries, it dries stiff, it will not come off. I do a lot of decoupage with tissue paper, sorry, and rice paper, and I just love it. I never had any issues. So I secured the edges. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this arch the same way, but this is going to be more um, detailing and intricate. So I'm gonna go and rub just right on the edges very lightly so that uh, it comes out really nice and clean. See? It's coming out beautiful and nice. There is uh, uh, 
not an extra bit that is left or taken off and that's why I like this sanding method because I feel you can be as accurate when you are just cutting it with a scissor and this just works best has anyone tried this method it's really lovely Maria right yeah I just like this method it's so easy it's so forgiving and uh, you don't waste any tissue paper. That's the best part. See how accurately it came off. Isn't it amazing? And you still have enough of it left so you can use another spot. So see how clear it is. Now again, I will take the top coat and I will go and seal the edge. I can also go ahead and seal the paint because this armor is still not sealed. I apply my transfer, uh, all the decoupage and everything, and sealing is the last step that I do. So I just go and seal the top, and I'm going to keep this clean and not put the uh, tissue paper. For two reasons, very honestly speaking, it's a bit tricky to come up on the edges and get it right. And uh, when you're doing work for your clients, you want it to be a nice looking and a beautiful piece without any errors so that they love the piece. So I'm just going and generously putting on the varnish. And you can go back, once it's dried, you can go back and give it a light sanding again because there are some, um, you know, you can see some trims just coming out. So you can just go back right when it's dry completely and just give it a nice sanding and smoothen this out. So see, it's ready. I just use my brush and push it back and just do this. Can you see this? This looks lovely, right? So you can see the difference. It's, it, this is not dry, so I cannot go and do on uh, this one, but I will show you on this drawer how you do it on the wood and not on the paint. So I move this aside and I'll take this drawer out. So I'm gonna use my screwdriver to pull this drawer out. And that's what I mostly do. And I'm gonna use it on the side, okay? And that's not painted. So I'm gonna take this uh, drawer out. So it's here. And let's see how you decoupage on the side of the drawer. So let me pull you a little bit up. And here it is. So again, I will take the sanding sponge and sand it and scuff it a bit. Take the tissue paper and wipe the dust off. And these are the simple steps that I follow and easy to remember as well, okay? So now, since this is not painted, it's just the wood, I will take the top coat and put it on the wood surface. And this is how you apply the rice paper as well. It's the same process. And I have a video on my YouTube and IGTV, that is Instagram, where I have just broken down how to apply your rice paper in a very simple way. So I'll see if I can fit this. I can't, so I'm gonna use this and I will use the new uh, decoupage. So since I sand the edges, I'm gonna be placing it right from here towards the end so that I can uh, sand from this corner. So I'm going to pull this a little bit down so that's straight. And I am going to first put some top coat on the, and you can see how it changes the color as soon as you put the top coat because it's grabbing onto the uh, wood. And when it dries, like I said, it dries very firm and stiff so you need not worry that it will come off. And uh, this varnish is pretty strong. So you can see it changes the color and you know that these are the spots that are getting the varnish and sealing and the rest is where you need to go and secure the edges especially. And like you see, the color is changing, but what will happen when it dries, it will be exactly like that. Because it's wet, 
uh, that's why it looks like this. So either way you can leave it to dry if you're not confident of sanding right away and once it's all dry you can go back and sand the uh, edges or you can sand it just after putting the top coat. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to take my sanding uh, pad and I'm going to sand the edges again. That's why adding details to a furniture takes so much of time because it's really time consuming. But at the end, your furniture looks so pretty. I don't know if you are like me who has like, who can't wait to see a finished piece. So I tend to, you know, do everything at the same time because I want to see the result. So you can just go back and squeeze out any air bubbles if you see while sanding so i would just hold this corner so i can first trim this see how beautifully it comes out oh i'm so sorry you can't see but you see how straight it comes out so when you push the drawer inside this this is not gonna touch the base and that's why the sliding inside and outside will be as smooth as ever so i get this question asked a lot that since i put it on the side is it difficult to move the drawers inside and outside it's not because if your uh, tissue paper is uh, not accurately sanded or cut to the size of the wood uh, and uh, then it will just you know come in the way when you pull it in and out but when you sand it it's just accurate and it never happens and then you can sand the uh, not sand wax the uh, rails and that's how it's more smoother so if I was not on the live I would have left uh, this drawer to dry and then later on once it was dry I would sand it and that's what I would recommend that if you are using this method then just leave it to dry it dries super fast I would say a few minutes like 15 minutes or so it's gonna dry the varnish varnish dries fast so it will be ready to sand you see it's all done and ready so it has changed the color, but once it dries, it will dry just like that. So this is what I wanted to show you that you can use the decoupage on a painted surface. Look, it's already dried and it looks so beautiful. And this is what um, decoupage looks like when it's on the wood and not painted. But it's going to dry white just like this color and not right now as it's appearing on the you know video it won't dry like this hey diane how are you so nice you can tune in so i hope i can pull this out and show you but uh, because it has a stopper i can't pull that out so i'm gonna move the camera a little bit forward to show you how it really looks like uh from close so this is dry and you see the edges are secure so you you can just move your finger in this way and see if any corner is loose and if it, it is loose then you just take your varnish brush and just touch it up in that corner see so if i if, if this corner you see this is popping out so i will just go and take my varnish here and go and secure it right in the spot and let it to dry once it dries it will be in place 
So this is what I am going to do on the drawers. Now, this is the stamp that I'm going to be using on the, uh, on the doors. So you see there's the ombre effect that I've created on the doors. So and this is the stamp. This is called Imperial Crackle. And this is how it looks like. It is half and half. So half is crackle and half is damask. And this design is exactly like this on the tissue paper. You see this? So I will be using this stamp to stamp the doors that you see right here. So I will be stamping these doors in uh, this stamp. And I will be making a video tutorial. I won't be live for this, but I will be making a video tutorial on how you can stamp furniture with paint. So I will be using a chalk paint, just like this color. That's a kind of a cream color. I will be using this and I will be stamping the door. So this is how the stamp is like. It's, it, it, it comes, it's all covered, but you see it's in two separate parts. It's a separate stance, it's a separate stamp. So I'm going to be just going and pulling this out. And this is how the stamp is. So I will be stamping the doors in the stamp and uh, the color is Vizal Cashmere. I will be using this because I want the door and the inside exactly to match. And I, I, I've been thinking a lot of how to, you know, just keep it neutral and simple and elegant and similar inside. And this is what I finally found and I'm going to be using this. If I prep with slick stick or boss, do I have to paint first? No. That's the beauty of uh, tissue paper is you can use it right onto the wood. Just make sure you sand it down to take the original finish out and it's not glossy. And if you are painting it, don't seal it. Like personally, I don't prefer sealing my pieces before I use a rice paper or tissue paper or even for that matter, transfer. Again, it depends what kind of top coat you are using, but I top coat everything at the end. So if you're using any primer or slick stick or boss or anything paint, you can just go right away, put a coat of top coat and put your tissue paper or rice paper and then make sure you're sealing it back again uh, with the top coat. So it's as simple as that. So basically there is no difference. I mean, I didn't find any difference between a tissue paper and the rice paper. They work very differently, but the texture is it's very, very different. And it, rice paper, um, I find it's easier to work. It's faster compared to the tissue paper, but the look again is just so beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed the live. And uh, I, if you want to see more of my tutorials and how I'm working with this stamp on this door, then make sure you're following me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, okay? So thank you so much guys for tuning in and being here and being an amazing, amazing audience. Where did you buy that stencil? Okay, this is the stamp. Yes, I also wanted to mention that if, if, if there is any retailer here or if you're watching on the replay, then please, uh, you can drop off your link so that, um, you know, our viewers, our followers just can go and buy this, uh, you know, tissue paper and stamp from you. This is the stamp and uh, this is called Imperial Crackle. So this comes in crackle half and half is this damask so you can you get two stamp in one set so you can buy both of them and create something similar like look like this so i will just be using this part and not the crackle so this is this stamp okay guys so thank you so much for tuning in and if you are watching the replay don't forget to tell me where you're watching from okay so take care have a great day bye bye